Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into Jimi Hendrix's Wow Wow World and we want to find out how he revolutionized the rock music world with the use of his Wah Wah pedal. We take a look at certain models that he used and of course I'll give you some sounds with the certain models and we do some comparison. Before we start I want to kick things off with a quote from Jimi Hendrix's tech guru Roger Mayer. He said, Jimi Hendrix probably did more to popularize the use of the wah pedal than anyone else and at the same time he hasn't left much room to play something that will be heard and remembered of as unique. Well, I can only underline that quote. If you are a guitar enthusiast, you probably know that Jimmy's use of the Wawa pedal was groundbreaking. He was not only playing it, but he was really sculpting new sonic landscapes with it. Now, let's quickly talk about Jimmy's early days when he started to embrace the Wawa pedal. Jimmy's journey with the Wawa pedal actually started when he recorded his first album and when he recorded the song I Don't Live Today. He recorded that song in February 1967, but the distinctive wah we hear in that song is in fact a hand wah that they used back in these days. Nevertheless, the sound really marked a new era for Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy's first use with the Wawa paddle as we know it today can be traced back to an appearance on August 15, 1967 at the Fifth Dimension Club in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He used the Clyde McCoy picture wa by Vox. The Wawa was equipped with the infamous halo inductor and it had low to medium gain silicon transistors like the BC109B or the BC173 or some 2N alternative. Typical for Jimmy's Wawa sound is the rather narrow sweep of the wah. Actually, this feature is so relevant that some famous cats nowadays <clears throat> achieve this effect by gluing a guitar pick to the heel section of their wah wah pedals. So as I mentioned before, Jimmy started out with a Vox Clyde picture wah and also known as the non-script wah. This was later rechristened to the V846 model and it had no more picture on the bottom and that's why some people call that the script wah. I've borrowed a 1968 Vox wah from a friend for the upcoming example. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, friends, I'm playing this old lady here, a late 60s Vox Wah, and I'm feeding her with a zinc carbon battery, keeping her far away from all transformers. And I'm using my Roger Mayer Axis Fuzz parallelly, and I'm not using the Univibes preamp right now, because in that era, 67, 68, Jimmy was, still wasn't using the Univibe, and I'm going straight into my Plexi. And yeah, Jimmy came back from his 67 tour and in September 67 he performed at the D-Time show in London where he played Burning of the Midnight Lamp and yeah, the extensive use of the wah during that song really shows that he was that he was really um, enjoying uh, the wah wah pedal and this 60 this late 60s wah is, it sounds really warm very vocal like yeah and you get this watery wawa effect that you can sometimes hear when jimmy plays the solo of little wing some people thought it's a univibe but there are bootlegs from a period way before he used the Univibe and actually it's the wah. You really got to have a, a fast foot and, and lots of accuracy in your, in your leg. Yeah, let's um, kick in the fuzz. Switching to the uh, bridge position here, and yeah, let's see what sound we can get out of this beautiful wawa. Yeah, it sounds like butter. All right. So I'm thinking that, that um, during this recording of um, Burning of the Midnight Lamp, Jimmy still was using the, um, the Vox Clyde Wah um, that Frank Zappa gave him, or maybe uh, another uh, Vox Clyde Wah. And I think that he only later started modifying the Wah Wah with Roger Mayer. I think during that era, 67, it was um, right before he started recording Axis Bowl is Love, or maybe he already did some recordings. I think they concentrated on modifying the fuzz first to make it work with the Wawa pedal that Jimmy brought from America. And then they went on to the Roger Mayer Wawa pedal, which we take a closer look at in a couple of moments. Now, how did Jimi Hendrix then really stumbled upon the Wawa pedal? We can choose between two narratives. The first goes like this. Jimmy sees Frank Zappa on his US tour playing a Wawa pedal. He likes it so much. Frank Zappa then buys him a Vox Clyde picture wa and gives it to him throughout Jimmy's 1967 US tour. The second narrative goes like this. Jimi Hendrix's bass player, Noel Redding, visits a Vox store in Great Britain and the staff actively asks him to bring Jimmy by to play that new pedal that they have. And that pedal was the Wawa pedal. Actually, we cannot exactly tell what happened, but my understanding is that Frank Zappa's narrative seems more realistic. Here's why. If we take a look at the pictures of the 1967 US tour the experience played. Then on June 18, they played Monterey, and in Monterey, we don't see a Wawa pedal. Then on June 28 of that year, Frank Zappa plays New York, and Jimmy attends this gig. He sees the Wawa pedal, he loves the Wawa pedal. 
Frank Zappa then buys Jimmy a wah-wah pedal and gives it to him on July 28, 1967. Probably Jimmy experimented a little bit with the pedal and then subsequently he used it for the first time on August 15 in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the Fifth Dimension. And only three days later at the Hollywood Bowl on August 18, he uses the pedal again. As mentioned, a key figure in Jimmy's gear journey was Roger Mayer. And as was the fuzzes. And by the way, if uh, you want to know more about Jimmy's fuzz legacy, then please go back and check out my video on this topic. Well, as was the fuzzes, uh, they bought lots of Wawa pedals and they analyzed the best sounding ones and they kept them to modify them. And during this analysis, they try to find out why these units were sounding so greatly. And Roger Mayer mostly modified the filtering range and the frequency of the sweep. This is what he did to make these units fit better into Jimmy's soundscapes. And crucially, Jimi Hendrix never used and he never had a buffer in his Wawa pedals. Here is my Roger Mayer Redline Wawa kit and it's supposed to contain most of the essential tweaks that Roger did to Jimmy's Wawa's. Have a listen. <laughs> All right, what I have on the floor right now is the Roger Mayer modded Wawa. It's called the Red Lion Wah, as I mentioned a couple seconds before. And the first difference that I recognize here uh, in comparison to the old Vox is the old Vox is more vocal. The Roger Mayer modded Wah functions a little better with the fuzz. So with the old Vox I had the impression that I had to change the order around going fuzz first into the wah, although the Roger Mayer Axis fuzz is especially modded to work after a wah, wah pedal. And we all know that Jimmy never turned the order or switched the order. He always used wah first and then fuzz. So this is what the Roger Mayer wah does pretty good and yeah it has a slightly different range it sounds a tiny bit more modern uh, let's kick off the fuzz and I am um, I'm backing off the tone on my guitar here down to six guitar volume is on eight and uh, yeah kicking in the in the wah wah Yeah, it definitely has a, a vocal uh, quality and I totally understand the mod. It um, has to do with the frequency and it also has to do with the impedance because this thing really yeah, works pretty well with the fuzz. And uh, yeah, um, there are two significant songs on the Axis Bold as Love album and I assume that Jimmy used the uh, Roger Mayer modded Wawa on this record. It's um, up from the skies, of course, but there some people say, but there are some people who say that Jimmy used a color sound Wawa for that song. And it's super, super vocal like the Wawa, and I cannot completely reproduce this with the Roger Mayer Wawa. But then there's also Little Miss Lover, 
And yeah, I just played kind of a little Miss Lava riff and here's the fuzz. We are uh, kind of getting there. Yeah, that, that's pretty close, but I assume that Jimmy played it with the neck pickup. Let's try it again for a sec. Alright, that was the Roger Mayer Red Lion War as modded for Jimi Hendrix. And let's move on to the next significant war in Jimi Hendrix's Wawa Chronicles and in his career. His gig at Woodstock in August 1969 and the Wawa that he used there is part of a controversy that's surrounding a Wawa pedal that has been auctioned for around 33,000 US dollars. But we don't want to fuel the discussion. Let us take an unbiased look at this pedal or especially at the mods done to this Wawa pedal by a man called Dave Weyer. One of the main parts of this mod was adding a 10k to the output. Further, the Wawa featured a square TDK inductor and that was supposed to give it a sharper sound and also to reduce the overall noise level. Jimmy experimented with different Wawa pedals. He was a gearhead just like you and me. And for the Woodstock gig, he probably grabbed one of his Wawas that sounded great that day. And you know, the Woodstock Wah just adds a little bit to the whole story, to the whole mystery. But um, if it was an Italian Clyde Picture Wah, an American Clyde Picture Wah, if it was the Dave Wire mod at Vox Wah, well, I don't know if we will ever know for, for certain, but one thing's definitely for sure, the whole thing sounded phenomenal. I'm playing my Joe Gagan Woodstock Controversy Wah, which is uh, an exact replica of the Woodstock Wah. And um, I'm going from the Wah into the Roger Mayer Axis Fuzz, which is the red fuzz with the, with the white knobs that Jimmy used um, throughout his Woodstock gig. And from the fuzz, I'm going into my Univibe and the Univibe preamp is on, which is error correct for the Woodstock gig. And from the Univibe, we are going into the Plexi. And yeah, so this wah has this high sizzle that we hear uh, throughout Jimmy's Woodstock gig. And it totally delivers and the 10K mod uh, the uh, resistor uh, which sits on the at the output of the Wawa pedal really makes it work brilliantly not only with the um, Roger Mayer Axis fuzz but also with other fuzzes. It's not like having a buffer and it's a good thing that it doesn't have a buffer um, because that's more true vintage sound my personal opinion. I'm not a big fan of uh, Definitely not a big fan of buffers in Wawa pedals. So let's listen to that thing. Uh, fuzz is on. I'm in the bridge position and yeah. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,
That was the Woodstock controversy wah made by Joe Gagan, a replica of the wah that Jimmy used um, at Woodstock. Presumably, Jimmy returned to the standard Vox V846 for his gig with the band of gypsies. And during 1968, Jimmy also used a top logo Crybaby made by Jen for the Thomas Organ Company. Now let's dive into another fun part and do a comparison between the models used by Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into Jimi Hendrix's Wawa revolution. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, and to share, to leave a comment and of course to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, rock on, we'll meet again, bye.